All right, guys, we're here with Danny Ryan, researcher with the Ethereum Foundation here at EdCon 2019. Welcome to the Daily Exchange. Danny, how's it going? Great, thanks for having me. So you just did a great talk on Ethereum 2.0. Um, do you want to sort of give everyone a bit of a, bit of a high level on, on what that was all about? Sure. So Ethereum 2.0 is a major protocol upgrade for Ethereum, um, for the network and for the community. Um, it's a pretty radical approach in that we have the existing Ethereum 1.0 chain and we're architecting um, an entire new and scalable proof of stake system to live in parallel with the existing chain. Okay. And, and, and in terms of um, uh, sharding, mm -hmm. um, how does that sort of fit in with the, your vision of Ethereum 2.0? Right. So sharding is uh, traditionally in databases, sharding is taking one database and breaking it up into uh, logical separate databases that can still communicate. And so we're taking this concept and instead of just having a single chain, which most chains um, in production today or just single chains. Uh, we're taking a single chain concept and instead of having one, having um, many of them. In Ethereum 2.0, we aim to have 1,024 shards that all live separately as user level shards, but that can communicate uh, via core protocol. Mm -hmm. Okay, brilliant. And um, what sort of, you know, I guess within that that, that core element, you said, uh, I think in your talk, you talked a little bit about how sharding and Ethereum 2.0, they're really almost melded together. Mm -hmm. There's no real difference. Um, right. Well, there's, yeah. So Ethereum 2.0 is a sharded protocol. Yep. And at its base is it's also a proof of stake protocol. So okay. instead of proof of work as the core consensus, yes. um, there are stakers, validators. So the core um, asset that secures the network is the token. And so sharding and, and proof of stake come together in the single design where we have a core, what we call the beacon chain a core system level chain where all the staking occurs and 1,024 shard chains that are connected and unified via this central chain. Okay. And what are some of the biggest challenges of bringing Ethereum 2.0 to, to life? Great question. <laughs> we, um, there's a, a, lot of, a lot of research and a lot of spec writing mm. uh, related to the research. The core foundational spec writing research is, is um, complete. And we're in much of an engineering effort mm -hmm. where um, we have, there's actually up to 10 teams that are working on creating clients for this new protocol. Wow. Um, and getting all of these like clients well tested, uh, kind of battle tested and ready for production, communicating well together, mm -hmm. consensus tested, fuzz, et cetera. Like those are our major, over the next six months, the, the major hurdles are really engineering efforts. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what are you excited about, I guess, with um, with this project coming up, what, what you know, and I guess into the future. Um, so right now we have some single client test nets, some smaller test nets where just say uh, Nimbus or Lighthouse mm -hmm. or have a test net where just versions of their own client are talking to each other. Upcoming um, the, the next quarter or so, we're going to be having larger scale, long lived multi client test nets um, that are going to be feeling a lot closer to production. So I'm. I'm super eager. As I saw the initial test nets, I just started getting super excited. Like it became mm. more and more tangible, and that's the next major hurdle. Brilliant. And realistically, you know, is it possible that proof of stake never comes to Ethereum? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Why is that? Obviously, we've. We've had many different work streams, a lot of different uh, paths of research on proof of stake for since really the beginning. Um, there's been. Uh, we've gone down some wrong paths. We've learned a lot. Uh, last year, we deprecated some old work streams that were going to upgrade the protocol in favor of this new, more radical design. Um, but at this point, we have concrete specs and we have concrete clients that are implementing it. Um, and I, it's going to happen. So um, you talked a little bit about, uh, as opposed to ZK Snarks, Starks and its its usage with um, scaling. Can you talk a little bit about how that will be employed with Proof of Stake? Sure. So. 
One of our design goals in Ethereum 2.0 is to be at least have a credible path to being quantum resistant in the three to five year time horizon. Mm -hmm. And so some of the components, uh, say, for, for example, um, BLS signatures that we're using, they're not actually quantum secure. Mm. And so um, but they, for our purposes, work really well today. Starks. Um, they're very similar to snarks, except they are quantum secure. Mm -hmm. And they do they have a lot of similar properties. You can use them for scalability. You can use them for constructing um, really interesting circuits. You can use them mm -hmm. for privacy as well. Mm -hmm. And so because they're quantum secure, a lot of these components that we have, um, such as the BLS signatures, we do plan on uh, the aggregation specifically in the BLS signatures. Mm -hmm. We do plan on replacing them with Starks in the future. Starks are it's very cutting edge technology. Um, there's a few different research teams that are working on them and they're they're like rapidly getting better. I think last year, a Stark proof used to be 400 kilobytes and they got it down to 40 kilobytes and they expect to get it down by an order, another order of magnitude. Um, so mm. super exciting stuff, very cutting edge and stuff that we intend to do, but is not currently in the specification. When 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 do you think um, you know Ethereum 2.0 will, will launch? So we're rolling it out in phases. Um, and the phase zero, which is the core system level proof of stake chain, um, I'm aiming for this year. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of things that are um, not quite in my hands with respect to the client development. So mm -hmm. definitely um, end of this year, early next year. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess what what sort of you know the, the what's the things that might speed that up or slow that down? Um, for a long time, the specification iterating was mm -hmm. slowing it down because mm -hmm. we had just a lot to work through mm -hmm. um, and, and doing that would hang up clients. Because we do have um, a very stable base specification mm -hmm. now, that's no longer the holdup. The holdup is going to be um, an engineering effort, getting these clients ready for production mm -hmm. um, and getting them tested not only mm -hmm. uh, with themselves, but operating together. Okay. Do you have any views on, uh, we've got this new prog, um, I guess, I don't know, some people say POW, P -O -W, depending mm -hmm. on how you want to uh, say it. Um, which, where do you say it, by the way? I say prog pal, but prog -pal. I guess I don't say it a lot, I read it a lot. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> prog pal. Um, you know, what's your sort of view on prog pal? I am generally convinced that um, it is a net benefit for the proof of work chain. That said, because we do want to move to proof of stake, there's there's a lot of different kind of variables and timelines and different technologies at play. Mm. And so I haven't really, I don't really have um, a horse in the race. I haven't spent a lot of time in that conversation. Um, and so I'm just gonna kind of let some other people battle that one out. <laughs> okay, that's fair play all around. Um, in terms of, um, you know, sort of in the next short term horizon uh, with ETH 2.0, what should people be looking out for? Um, as I've said before, test nets. Uh, okay. I know Nimbus already has a, a public single client test net that you can pull down their code, um, spin up a validator and validate uh, blocks on their on their network, mm -hmm. which is super exciting. Um, we're going to see in uh, Q2, Q3, longer standing test nets. I, I've actually, I was watching Cosmos's game of stakes where they had these structured test nets where people mm. were trying to break them and like mess with the incentives. Uh, I really hope to see uh, maybe Q3 okay. to have some of these more structured games so that, that uh, people can get involved and try to break things. Brilliant. And uh, if people want to sort of, you know, contribute or, or help, um, how can they do that, Danny? <sighs> there is so much to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, even just pulling down the specs and fi fixing typos uh, at the bare minimum, but mm. uh, contributing, finding errors, finding bugs. Uh, on the client side, most of these clients have taken an effort to be very open to external contributors with respect to development. Mm. So you can go on their GitHubs, pick good issues and, and contribute. Um, and then there's a lot of community efforts going on. Um, ETH Hub is a great resource and they, they uh, just try to aggregate information about the community and about the projects and they accept um, pull requests on GitHub to modify things. So if, if you notice that that was out, out of date, you can go in and like fix um, some of the references and things like that. There's so much to do um, and if you like seriously, reach out to me. Reach out to people on Gitter. Uh, Gitter is where a lot of people congregate, um, okay. and we can all point in the right direction. Brilliant. Thank you so much uh, for sharing the future of Ethereum 2.0, Danny. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome, awesome to be here.